Do any of you designate genres to a specific month or season? I'm sure many do the whole horror thing in October and maybe some festive holiday crap around December, but what about all of those other months? Personally, I tend to listen to more upbeat music in the summer. Jazz, rap, punk, and funk. In the dead of winter, I'm all about comfort movies and filthy, thick metal albums. In between Halloween candy comas and unbridled yuletide commercialism, I tend to seek solace in cynicism. The shorter days that lead into darker nights, still a bit early for snow. November brings out the noir in me. The pulpy short stories of Cornell Woolrich, point and click adventure game classics. This month we'll be focusing on the icy cold world of it all. November noir. Edgar G. Ulmer's Detour dropped slap dab central during the classic period of noir in 1945 and was the first B-movie considered for the National Film Registry. It's not the earliest example of a hard-boiled pulp story to make its way to the cinema, but definitely not a bad place to start if you're new to this quasi-genre. It stars Tom Neal as Al Roberts, a down-on-his-luck pianist who gets wrapped up in a web of lies. Yeah, I grimaced writing out that cliché, but that's what the story boils down to. The plot is meat and potatoes, but everything unravels quickly. Never has a title been so appropriate as our main man finds himself at the mercy of a hitchhiking dame who is out to blackmail him, a truly sadistic woman who gets introduced much later than expected, perfectly portrayed by Anne Savage. There's a hatred between the two main characters that is palpable, perhaps due to their alleged distaste for one another in real life. She is known simply as Vera, which is perfect. As the clear villain, it was a wise choice to keep it mysterious. What's your name? You can call me Vera if you like. Is it her real name? I'm guessing no. The complexity is in the details. What starts out as a straightforward premise eventually turns into an intense battle of wits between the pair. This film was apparently shot for less than $30,000, and it shows in certain visuals, but still remarkable just the same. By this point, Ulmer was seemingly creating a movie every nine days and had gotten quite proficient at making something from nothing. I've not seen all of his pictures, but I have caught enough to notice the marked improvement over the years, especially between like this and say, The Black Cat, which is one of his earliest. It's definitely not fair to compare Detour to that early 30s Lugosi and Karloff outing when it comes to style or visual quality, but his pacing noticeably improved over the years. Just try to sit through the black cat without nodding off. The entire thing devolves into two tired geriatrics dragging their feet around an old house looking for soup and sweaters. It's dull, but there's one uncharacteristically gritty fight scene at the very end that almost makes the entire slog worth a viewing. Though I suppose I just ruined that for all of you. All right, so no more detours, I promise. Next time I go to Niagara Falls. The film starts at the end, with Roberts recounting how he went wrong. Understandably, on edge and a bit prickly, he narrates the events for the audience under some stylish angular lighting and clever camera work. It doesn't get more film noir than this. Ulmer's use of shadows, interesting cuts, and music is quite good here. Leo Ordotti's score isn't anything to write home about, but the diegetic piano pieces performed by the lead in the early nightclub scenes reflect the character's emotions very well. The danceable tunes he plays with his singer-girlfriend are light-hearted, but when she leaves New York for the West Coast, his material becomes much more aggressive and personal. These visuals are some of my favorite, as they show what a creative director can do with a limited budget. Things get set in motion when this ordinary healthy guy decides to reconnect with his ordinary healthy girl. I was an ordinary healthy guy, and she was an ordinary healthy girl, and when you add those two together, you get an ordinary healthy romance which is the old story. Sure, but somehow, the most wonderful thing in the world. All in all, I was a pretty lucky guy. Charles Haskell Jr. is the next main player we meet. He picks the hitchhiking Roberts up, buys him a meal, and the two share a few stories. The way the paths of all three of our characters intersect is logical. Martin Goldsmith's screenplay is simple, but succinct, with no loose threads. I'll wait out here for you, mister. Well, if there's some money, don't worry about paying for it. This time it's on me. Well, that's white of you, mister. Haskell. Think nothing of it. 
You make your first million, maybe you can do the same for me. Come on, New York. This short run time is perfect. Detour is just over an hour long, and I really can't imagine it any other way. Once Vera is introduced, things get intense really quick. Like a camper seeking refuge from a storm. She's clearly a vicious person, lonely, likely abused. Still, there are glimpses of humanity, specifically when it comes to how she tries to hook up with this handsome Harry Connick Jr. looking guy. The way she goes about it is all wrong, probably due to her never being treated decently herself, but that's just a guess. I'm going to bed. Good night, Roberts. Don't try and sneak away during the night. All the doors are locked. Anyway, if I find you gone in the morning, I'll notify the police. They'll pick you up. Don't worry, I know when I'm in a spot. Well, good night. I hope that portable rack isn't too uncomfortable for you. Don't lose any sleep over it, will you, Savage is an apt name for this actress. Anne looks like she's having a blast as she torments Tom, especially when she's given the space to act like a brat. It's really uncomfortable to watch, but perfectly performed. Over the top, blunt, pure, hard boiled goodness. It's easy to feel pathos for Roberts. Things go from bad to worse as his simple journey continues to get knocked off track until it eventually derails. Every twist is psychologically exhausting, but exciting to witness. Almer wasn't afraid to get a bit dark with the subject matter. It's a film noir by the numbers, but expertly crafted. The title is relevant in so many ways. Give it a shot. It's free on this garbage platform, probably with a few ads tossed in by low-life loser succubuses looking to make an easy buck from a public domain product. There's also a Blu-ray for a more than reasonable price out there released by Criterion, so you know it's a good transfer. It contains a bunch of interviews, documentaries, and other goodies. I highly recommend it. It's just so incredible to me that this old film created on a shoestring budget in some of the most organic CD environments out there has been polished to such a degree. Give it a watch, let me know what you think. Next time on this channel, a noir-style video game. So stay tuned! <laughs>